In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. With those words, the first last light service on our circuit began here in Sandy Row in 1999, as we prepared for the momentous beginning of a new millennium. Normally, we would have had a watch night service, but the celebrations in the centre of Belfast that night was going to make that impossible. So we decided to move to a last light service in the afternoon. As the light fades, on this last day of 2020, another momentous year for different reasons, we decided that it was unwise to meet in person for our last light service. And so we thought we would revisit that first service as a circuit in this online service. And we begin with a hymn that praises the maker of heaven and earth. Let us pray. Lord, open our eyes to your glory about us. Open our hearts and minds to your light. Open our mouths to sing out your praise and tell your great good news. Because whilst you created a world that was good, we have taken your good gifts and misused and abused them. We have preferred darkness to light Yet in your love for us, you sent us your Son 
to show us how you want us to live and to call us back to you for your son paid the price for our sinfulness. In his name, forgive us all our faults in the past, all that we have done and left undone, said and left unsaid that is unworthy of you. Forgive us and help us to change our ways in the future. And we thank you that just as you created all things in the beginning, you can give us all a new beginning in Christ. Help us to live each day in the light of his love and your mercy and grace. Amen. All things find their beginning in God, even time itself. In the run-up to the change from 1999 into 2000, many people were at pains to emphasise that time is an artificial construct. Different people measure time in different ways. Some use the cycle of the seasons to measure years. Some use the orbit of the moon to measure months. We measure our days and our years according to how the Earth rotates around the sun, more or less. But whether or not they recognise it, most of the world has chosen to measure out our years and indeed our millennia according to one event. When the time had fully come, Paul says in Galatians, God sent his son. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of humanity. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only. Who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let us confess our common faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It's all very well confessing our faith in a formal creed, but what difference does it make to our everyday lives? One of the features of early Methodism was people sharing their testimonies of how their faith in Christ had helped them. And at the first Last Light service back in 1999, we invited some of those gathered uh, to share the story, uh, stories of the difference that their faith had made to them in the preceding year. Today, I've invited Eileen Jemison, the Society Steward in Sandy Road, to share a little of how her faith has supported her in this turbulent year. This year has to be one of the most trying and difficult years many of us have lived through. Who would ever have thought we would have been living through a pandemic? But I have to say that during this time, I have grown closer to God. And I have felt God moving me in my life. This year has been quite a hard year for my own family personally. We've been through a lot of terrible things, but God has been in the midst of it all. God has blessed us and anointed us. He has been with us every step of the way. I started at the start of this pandemic. I and another family went round me, delivered food parcels to people, helping out in that way. But as time went on, more and more people and agencies were coming in to help that. And it was wonderful to see the way people worked together, so helping one another, really caring about one another, supporting one another and being there. But as time went on, I, I could feel that God was calling me to do more. At the very beginning, whenever this happened, I set out to do a Bible study on WhatsApp every day mainly for people who are living alone so they would have contact with, another, with others, but it was also to help us to, to be focused and know that God was with us during that time. That Bible study has kept going right up to the present time. It has been a true blessing in my life and the life of those who have done it. They have studied the Word of God in, in ways it's been done slowly and thoughtfully. Um, they have seen and learned things that have been there but they have never seen or understood before as have I. God has opened up his word and in us and in our lives and it has been a true powerful and a mighty blessing. During this time God has also used me in my community. Uh, we had I've had a lot of loss in our community but it and it wasn't anything to do with COVID and during that time I've had people come to my door and ask me, could I take the funeral of a, a cherished loved one? This has been truly humbling and a powerful thing to be part of, to be able to witness it in the midst of all this, that God was with these, with the people and he would comfort them and strengthen them if only they would lean on him. And it was to, for them to see the blessings that God bestowed upon them and the love of the family that was there. I learned so much about how God works in everyone's lives. And I have seen where God has blessed people to love and care and come together. I have seen people in their own pain and suffering go and comfort and help others in, in ways that only they could do. I have thanked God in every part of this journey. He has been with me. I completed my local preaching um, course, uh, so I have. and. That, that has been a true blessing. It has been a wonderful way God has used me and helped me and my family through the times, the difficult year that we have had. 
But all through this time, there was one piece of scripture that stuck with me. And that was Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer, petition and with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. These words are true and powerful, and they have brought me through this. I just thank my God for being with me. I thank him for everything, and and I really am grateful. Thank you. Also, as part of our first Last Light service in Sandy Row back in 1999, we read out email messages from mission partners and friends across the world to remind us that we weren't just part of uh, a few small uh, uh, congregations, but part of a worldwide family of faith. Today, uh, we are going to hear two messages from uh, some of those who sent us emails back uh, in 1999. But thanks to the advances in technology, they can send us videos. The first is someone who's a few hours behind us in the USA. 
former associate minister in Sandy Row and Springfield Road, now a Mennonite minister in Elkhart, Indiana, Dave Moser. And then the second is from two people who are a few hours ahead of us en route to 2021, Barry and Gillian Sloan, who were contemporaries of mine at Edge Hill, but who have now been based in Germany for over 20 years. And then, as an added bonus, Barry is going to share a song uh, that he has written. Hi everyone, greetings from Chemnitz, from Barry and Jill here. We're sitting in our rooms in Inspire, which is uh, our community project here in the city that Barry and I, along with six other team members, started. Five 2015 yeah yeah five years ago now um it's a quiet time now because of uh, covid but we're sitting here in our own uh, in the inspire rooms yep hello from me as well uh david asked us to share some prayer requests thanks for thinking about us and involving us in this um this this event you have tonight this online meeting um we've got three quick prayer requests um Pray for the Inspire team. We're a, a team of volunteers. Uh, there are eight of us in total, um, all different kinds of people, weird and wonderful, gifted people. Uh, pray for us as a team. Uh, it's been tough times this year because um, we haven't been able to have our team meetings as usual. Uh, so just remember us in your prayers. And number two is also for the Inspire team. Um, our community project really is based around community, being together, sharing our lives together. And in 2020, that really hasn't been able to happen. So most of our events that run on a regular basis here have been canceled. Um, but we've had a time of adjusting and have found new things that we've um, started to do in this time such as um, we've used our rooms here as a base um, to collect clothing and food for homeless and we have been responsible for distributing them then in the city. But we have a little bit more capacity as a team to do some other things and pray that we just find the direction and the tasks that um, need to be done in our city to use this as a positive opportunity. Yeah. And our last prayer request is, it's basically also related to, to COVID, but also Brexit. Um, Jill and I, we're, we're mission partners from the Methodist Church in Ireland, serving here in Germany, and Brexit will have some implications for us. Um, now, uh, thankfully, not as bad as, as other folks in the UK, but it's nevertheless led us to explore some other ways of trying to to do ministry and do mission here. Um, we have a few ideas. They're not really, we're, we're not, we're not uh, at the stage yet where we can actually go into big details, but we ask you to pray for guidance for us uh, about the, the one or two new ideas that we have uh, that are around the issue of um, how can we build bridges across borders and how can we even report back to Ireland when we, when we can't travel as freely or as often. Um, um so so yeah just pray for guidance for the, the the couple of sort of projects that we have uh, potentially in the pipeline so thanks very much for uh, including us tonight and uh, we wish you every blessing for the new year uh 2021 um may you know god's presence with you uh, every step of the way um peace be with you the song I'm going to sing for you is called 13. I've written this song myself. It's, it's based on 1 Corinthians 13, inspired by that great chapter on love in the New Testament. It's about love and light and darkness and hope. And I hope you like it. 13. How many rainbows must I have seen before I find me some hope? The Richard of York goes battling in vain. I'm colorblind, don't you know? And 
it's dark in here inside of me I'd like to clarify if I may but How much light do I really need Just to make my day If I don't got you I don't got you I don't got you No, no, no If I don't got you I don't got you I don't got you No, no, no I'm not patient and I'm not kind if I don't got you I am selfish every time If I don't got you and My poor heart, it's not for sale If I don't got you What's mine is mine, that's why I fail Sitting at a bar with the Guinness in my hand Looking through a glass darkly I'm thinking about a world that needs a better man And I need someone to start me So hey Mr. Barman, won't you fill me up again? Can you make it something stronger this time? A water of life or a whiskey, it's the same That's the spirit that is divine If I don't got you, I don't got you I don't got you, no, no, no if I don't got you, don't got you, no, no, no. Suppose I can speak in the tongues of angels, but I don't got you. Suppose I got the faith to cat move mountains, but I don't got you. And what if I can understand the things of God, but I don't got you. It don't matter, nothing counts, all is lost if I don't got you. I don't got it, I don't got you. Give me, 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 give me till I got you. And give me, 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 give me till I got you. Give me, 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 give me till I got you. Give me, 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 give me till I got you. God bless. We come to that part of our service when we pray for others, our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, give us the help of your Spirit, we ask, as we now pray for the Church and for the world. We pray for justice and peace throughout this world. Father, strengthen and comfort all of those around the world who are persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ. Put it in the hearts of all political leaders to ensure that all of them, those whom they govern, are treated justly and equally provided for. Lord, give wisdom to those agencies who are working in the world to advocate on behalf of those who are subject to violence or who are otherwise treated unjustly. Father, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Lord, in the first book of Scripture, you charge us to look after your creation. We ask you for wisdom in stewarding that which is within our own gift. We pray that you prompt political leaders and industrial leaders throughout this world to make environmental protection a priority in their own thinking and in their planning. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Father, as a church with congregations across this island, we pray for the Republic of Ireland and for Northern Ireland, and we pray for your church across this island. Your son prayed that all of those who believed in him would be one that the world might believe. We pray that indeed your church on this island would be one. 
as we prepare for our annual covenant services, we pray for the Methodist Church in Ireland. Draw us close to you, we ask, through your indwelling spirit, and help us to serve our neighbours in 2021. Lead and bless the societies on our own circuit, and bless our communities through us, we ask. Lord, we pray that many people in the wider community would be reached in the new year through the missionary work of Belfast Central Mission, of the Belfast South Network Company, of the University's Chaplaincy, of the Methodist College Chaplaincy, and of the City Centre Chaplaincy. Lord, we pray for those who face the new year with uncertainty and fear, for those known to us who are sick at hospital or at home, for those we know who are caring for the sick. May they all know your healing, your comfort and your strength and that joy which comes from you despite our circumstances. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We pray, Lord, for ourselves. Draw us closer to you. Give us guidance in our own decision-making, your strength and comfort in our struggles, and your joy in serving you in this world. We remember in your presence those who have died, giving thanks especially for those who have revealed to us your grace in Christ. Help us to follow the example of your saints in light and bring us with them to the fullness of your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray the family prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Over the past few years, the last light service has taken place in Donegal Road Methodist Church and we look forward to celebrating it here again. However, none of us knows what the future will bring. But we commit ourselves to the one who does. To God we give our lives completely and unreservedly. We seek the mind of Christ, the guidance and the power of the Holy Spirit. We commit ourselves to the good news of Jesus Christ. We will proclaim it in word and deed. Good news for the poor, wholeness for the hurting, freedom for the captives. Shalom, God's peace. We will work for peace. Speak up for justice and mercy. We protect the vulnerable. We will use our power and influence for others and not ourselves. We will live for others. We will look for Christ in the eyes of the poor, the outcast and the stranger. We will live in love, loving God with all our heart and mind and soul and strength. We will love each other as Christ has loved us, bound together as brothers and sisters in a loving family. We will love our neighbours as ourselves, neighbours next door, neighbours in this city, neighbours throughout this world. We will even seek 
to love our enemies, forgiving those who have hurt us, saying sorry to those we have hurt. We will act as faithful stewards of God's creation. We will use and guard the resources of the earth with great care. We will rejoice in the discoveries and creativity of humanity, but seek his wisdom in all we do. And to God be the glory, to our Father, the Creator, Jesus, our Saviour, and the sustaining Holy Spirit. To God be all the praise and glory, forever and ever, to the end of all ages. Amen. Earlier we heard a piece of music written by Barry Sloan. Now we're going to hear another written by another friend of mine. One of the pluses of 2020 and the enforced social isolation of COVID has been people using technology to keep in touch and indeed reconnect in new ways. Chris Hoban is one of those with whom I've reconnected over this past year. He's a teacher in England and he's had a particularly tough time during lockdown. And during the year we were talking about the book of Job and how that's a, a very pertinent book for what we've been going through. In the light of that, he has written this song for the new year. Happy New Year for 2021. Stay close to me. The factories are silent, the cinemas closed, the high streets deserted, and nobody knows when we'll all be returning to where we should be while the world keeps its distance stay close to me stay close to me while uncertainties grow stay close beside me and never let go of the love that we share when our spirits while the world keeps its distance, stay close to me. There are whispers abroad when there's no one about. A light in the darkness that never goes out. And a break in the sky where the clouds meet the sea. Light in my darkness, stay close to me Stay close to me, while uncertainties grow Stay close beside me, and never let go Of the love that we shared, when our spirits were free While the world keeps its distance, stay close to me Stay close to me, while 
while uncertainties grow Stay close beside me And never let go of the love that we share When our spirits were free While the world keeps its distance Stay close to me When we had the very first Last Light service in Sandy Road in 1999, Sandra and Donald Kerr read the next reading. At that point, Donald was a lecturer in Edge Hill, but would go on to be the next superintendent of Belfast Central Mission. He and Sandra have now retired and have moved to England but again, thanks to the joys of technology, they were able to record this reading for us again in their new home. A vision of a new beginning. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with people and he will live with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendour to it. And so we look forward to that time when there will be no need for earthly light, because God's light will be all we need. But until that time, we pray that God would lead us on by his light. As we sing our final hymn, again with music by Jonathan Ray and his son.
Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 to 3, a vision of a new beginning. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Our concluding blessing comes not from the first last light service, but the second one, 20 years ago. But it is just as relevant today as we prepare for 2021. Lighten our darkness, O Lord, we pray. Lighten our darkness at the end of this day. Defend us from danger and perils of night. For the love of Jesus, the word who brings light. Lighten our burden, O Lord, we ask. Lighten our burden, bring joy in our tasks. Give peace in our hearts and grant us your might. For the love of Jesus, the word who brings light. Amen.